I will present not in my name. <laughs> we are a very big group that we engage in this uh, very new group. I think we started in September when we agreed that it was very important to have as well a hygiene and food uh, group. And I will show you now why we didn't take the food out, but the food will be in <laughs> again. Um, and the first step that we have done is try to engage members of the group. In the beginning, it was only myself and Michelle, that it's as well here in, in the meeting room. Um, and slowly we engage other members of the group that are as well online, I guess. Um, uh, and we make a big synergy with our watch cluster hygiene promotion emergency subgroup. So many of the members that you see here that, that in this subgroup are as well in other hygiene promotion watch cluster group. But uh, I want to as well, like Christopher uh, asked in previous, I know you see many members of the group, but as you can see, we don't have the voices from the field. And we hear yesterday, yeah, from the field, from the countries, that it was difficult, the sustainability, it was difficult, behavior change, it was difficult as well to engage with communities, maintenance of the boreholes, and many other issues. And we don't want to be a group sitting here in NSC, a global group. We want that as well partners from the field can join this subgroup because we think it's, it's a very important topic. So what was our second step? We wanted to review a little bit what global task force uh, documents and as well the NCPs, the draft NCPs. And we wanted to see how much hygiene promotion was was in this mention, no? in these documents, which were the indicators that we have for hygiene promotion. And we found, um, for example, in the NCP guidance note, we find only two indicators for hygiene promotion. We find indicator 14, where we see that uh, this mentioned proportion of people with access to hygiene in hotspot, but it's not defined what is hygiene itself. And the indicator 16, proportion of the hotspot population that has correct knowledge on cholera prevention in communities. And why I highlight knowledge? I highlight knowledge there because knowledge, it's any mean to behavior change, right? I mean, for sure we need knowledge from the communities, but we cannot um, think that this is our indicator. We find as a group that it, the indicators were a little hard to measure the impact of hydrogen promotion and as well a little bit limited when a little bit or limited to, to really, you know, think of a good approach for hydrogen promotion. And we wanted as well to insist as a group, hygiene promotion is much more than simply disseminating messages. We know I mean, we can go in an emergency, distribute hygiene kits and come in with the pamphlets, How? <laughs> but this is not. We want to achieve more sustainable behavior change. So this is why the group wanted to agree and how we wanted to take care or wanted to suggest that the hygiene promotion component we see there communication knowledge, it's, it's one of the main issues, but we, we, we as hygiene promoters know there's much more than communication. We have um, social and behavior change, we have the community engagement and participation, and we have as well a very important one that it's the accountability as well for our communities. And I think we talk a lot about trust during during these days, trust and as well sustainability and everything needs to be covered. If not, we, we are not achieving um, the correct hygiene promotion. And I am not like Claudio, I will not do a performance here, but I, 
I always show this important uh, slide for me when I, I need to convince uh, non-hygiene promoters why hygiene promotion is important. And we know perfectly that hardware, sanitation facilities, we're talking about water, safe supplies, soap, jerry cans, the toilets are important, everything is important. But if we don't invest and in doing a right balance with the software, we know that we need, you know, without the right hygiene promotion and community engagement, there is no behavior change, right? We see in many emergencies that the behavior is changing during the emergency, right? Why? Because the population fear of getting sick or the mother's fear that the children will, will get sick. And in this moment, you know, uh, we have a peak of behavior change. We can see that the people utilize aqua tabs, they wash their hands, but then when the emergency finish, we see like, what Cathy was demonstrating with Tom yesterday, why after two weeks, the people are not using aqua tabs? Why after two weeks, the people have no soap in, 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 the, in, yeah, in the hand washing facilities? And this is where we need to go further. We need to understand motivators and barriers from the community to understand what we will do correct the next time. So as a group, the third, step that we took is trying to find out what we you know could do as uh, how hygiene promotion can improve the quality and effectiveness of our wash cholera intervention so we put some of the for for us practical actions or actions that we um, understood as the hygiene promotion subgroup that it will be need you know, for what we were talking these days, trust, sustainability, and, and, and things like that. When we are talking about community engagement and participation, we, from the beginning, from the assessment, till the planning, till the monitoring, need to have the, the community on board. I mean, it's, it, if we don't have the community on board, we can have many mistakes when we, when we design. If we don't do user-centered design, with the facilities where, where, where the water source will be allocated, where the sanitation facilities will be there. Or we can have many mistakes, and I think we need to involve all the groups in the decision making. Another important thing, and we heard yesterday from Mozambique several times, is on the use and maintenance of the wash facilities, right? I mean, if we don't look for locally appropriate mechanisms for operation and maintenance after one year that we, or two years that we construct the boreholes or the water points, we will have problems with maintenance. And so can we please train do wash committee trainings, perhaps on fee collection, perhaps in maintenance, in repairs of the boreholes. And then as well, sometimes a solution could be establishing as well private public partnerships at country level, right? And, and for sure, I put here the link of the government structures, but the government structures need to be involved from the beginning, <laughs> from the assessment to the planning and every in every steps. And then, uh, we were talking about as well about community and individual behavior change. And, and, and for sure, many times we are going in the emergencies and, and we pretend that the same, the same actions that we are doing in, in Malawi can be as well working well in, in Cameroon. But it's not true. I mean, we have different cultures, we have different religions, we have different tribes, social issues. We need to understand the barriers and motivators. Many times it's, it's about understanding and doing more qualitative as well uh, interviews. And it doesn't need a big cost. You know, we, we, we are discussing here in this, in this plenary all the time about quantitative. Yeah, quantitative is a huge investment, but sometimes with a small qualitative as well, focus with discussion or talking to the population in, in, in what they really need and why they really want perhaps makes much difference. And it needs not really a big investment. And then on distribution of hygiene related items and materials, we want to emphasize here is the same 
Many times we are distributing standard kits that come from our global level, and we don't know really if these items uh, work. We, we heard as well about Aquatap, perhaps in Mozambique, as we know, is Certeza, why we are bringing other products and we are not looking before, before we don't need to look that at an emergency operation. We should look that in preparedness, readiness, or in prevention. Look of local material, look of, um, and we can localize the hygiene kits already, right? Like Chris was adding yesterday, this is as well something that we, we need to do before an emergency is happening, working with the government, with the wash cluster, and trying to define uh, what is in the market, in each market, and having ready kits at country level, not, not sending it from. Uh, um, and then another important thing of that, sometimes we are giving the hygiene kits, but we are not doing any satisfaction survey afterwards. So we need as well to monitor the use of these things that we are distributing and hearing from the population if we can change in the next emergency as well situation, or we can adapt it for a better kit in the next, in the next future. Okay, so the... Other steps but that we took is we try to see and define what are the risk uh, hygiene behaviors uh, that, that we have in cholera. And I, I don't want, I mean, you are super familiar with that, so I don't want to, you know, give a speech on that, but we, we, we wanted to insist in some of them. I wanted to insist that, yeah, water source is, is safe water source. It's very important. But we want to go a little far away. I mean, many times the transmission of cholera, it's not from the water source, it's from the transportation and from the household level handling of the water. So this we need to insist as well that it's not only, you know, constructing and, and putting boreholes and springs, it's as well how we will track that the population transport and hunt the water in a correct way at, at household level. And then we have as well the food hygiene. We see food hygiene, it's, it's very important. And I think some uh, colleagues from the field already mentioned that yesterday, but we wanted to go far away, I mean, a step further and say, okay, at household level is important, but what happened at food and water vendors as well, right? And this is a big issue, for example, in Ghana, this, the two last uh, cholera outbreaks were from the market, food from the food restaurants or for the food uh, selling the market. So this is how we see it. We are open as a group to check if there's other um, behavior that we can add. So you are all welcome to that. Uh, and then what we wanted is to make a little bit uh, uh, a brainstorm about the challenge that we see as a group in, and, the, and the opportunities that we see as, as, as a hygiene promotion subgroup. So I think many of these we cover and we wanted to do the challenge in positive, not doing it as a challenge, but many of that I covered already. We see that it's a less interest in the hygiene promotion and the hygiene promotion per se, it's the cost is much less by the way than the hard work uh, part of it. It's only that we, we clarify that as well. Many times the investment is in software, it's much less than the hardware. So we need to balance it right. Uh, there is a tendency of message dissemination, more used than the holistic approach during the interventions. This I cover already. The hygiene interventions, um, uh, we see that they are not, not contextualized. We cannot use the same pamphlet, perhaps for you know, a cholera outbreak in Mozambique, then a pamphlet for the cholera outbreak in, I mean, the message is the same, but if we can tailor to the context will be fantastic <laughs> because many times we, we think it's the same messages we should do, but we need to see the barriers and motivators to tailor the message better. We find as well that the unfamiliarity on community participation and feedback, and many people 
uh, afraid of this word, and it's it's not so complicated, right? It's 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 only <laughs> having more quality interviews, understanding, and hearing the population. So so we feel sometimes, yeah, when we are talking about community participation, feedback, and accountability, the people say, "Oh, this is too complicated for us." <laughs> so I don't think uh, it is. And then we, but and then we see as well a challenge on short-term cholera response initiative versus, for sure, what we want in the end is sustainable behaviors. But we see a lot of opportunities as well. We see that we need increase, and we are discussing this from yesterday. We have an increased coordination with other WASH Global Task Force subgroups. For sure, we want to be uh, with the NCP. Um, and, and making sure that the NCP, you know, uh, a brainstorm by hydrogen promotion and, <laughs> and put it as an important um, activity in the plans. We have as well a strong coordination with the WASH cluster hydrogen promotion emergency subgroup, all the same uh, experts from some, the groups are very similar, um, we are the same. And I wanted as well to add that it's, I mean, this, this group, it's calling hygiene promotion in emergency, but we are targeting not only emergency hygiene promotion, we are targeting resilience. I mean, we, we are talking and, and having the same tools and different approaches for both hygiene promotion in emergency, but as well in long term. And then we have a very good opportunity because now in March, uh, they will be launched the Hygiene Promotion Compendium. This is a compendium uh, of approaches that has been developed by, um, lead by WASH Network, uh, plus a, a lot of organizations that have sit here has been involved in this compendium. Um, and this will be launched launch in, in March, in the World Water Day, this, uh, the 22. So I think we have a, lot, a big opportunity to take a lot of the recommendation from this hygiene promotion compendium and not reinventing the wheel, use it and, and share between the global task force um, colleagues to, to see how we, we can use this problem. And then as well, we see a potential collaboration and, and uh, with, for, the, for sure, the CEA uh, group, the OCB, and the CBS uh, Global Task Force groups. Okay, so this is my, my last slide. And we try to, to think what could be our not very ambitious, <laughs> not too ambitious actions for short term, Medium term, we thought could be from 2023 to 2025. And the long term, uh, we thought it's more for the 2030 when it's the ending of the cholera roadmap. So um, by the way, you see advocacy there, but I think all in the, all, the whole process, advocacy is it's part of, of it. We, we are not having only advocacy at the end, but uh, we need to have advocacy in the whole process. We want to map hygiene promotion evidence based in cholera. So we are starting on that. So this will be perhaps report as well to the case study group. Uh, we wanted to map which are the um, interesting evidence based cholera hygiene promotion case studies. And we can report or case studies or examples that we have in the field. So we then could report to the case study group. We want as well to do really a more in deep revision of the global task documents regarding hygiene promotion and putting comments or suggestions where, where we can improve them or where can we add uh, more CEA or, or hygiene promotion. We want as well to review and rethink for sure the hygiene promotion indicators uh, not to really overload you with more indicators, but at least to put some basic standard indicators that can make sense on, on, on what we are doing and make more sustainable our, our, our intervention. <laughs> In medium term, we want to, uh, again, improve hygiene promotion components in the CN NCP development plans. We would like as well to, to be part on the review of the 
NCP plant or advisor role or, or something that we can support the NCPs before you know they are finished in the development to, to advocate for more hydrogen promotion. And then we have the hydrogen promotion guidance note checklist. This will be something easy. Um, uh, and, and as we say all the time, we don't see you know, hygiene promotion for emergency, we don't want to divide divide what work well in an emergency will work well in, in, in long term. And many of our approaches, we can use it for the emergencies and as well for the, for the long term. So we don't want to have a division. We want to work more on, on the nexus, how we heard yesterday. We will have long term, this is our commitment, doing more having an advocacy plan for hygiene promotion integration in all WASH projects, not only with the NCP as well to try to target, you know, uh, other interventions from other externals and then linking with broader initiatives as the hand, hands uh, washing and the global hand washing partnership, the Nexus and the RCCA and other CEA um, initiatives that are already there. So I stop here. Michelle, I asked Michelle if I, I forgot to add something. I'm so happy that we are here, both of us, or perhaps other members of the group, if they are online and want to add something. If no, this is what our subgroup could achieve in these short periods. Thank you.